This is Contesty Al Franken's motion to dismiss a contest against his election for U.S. Senator from Minnesota, uh, which surprisingly has been granted. And all it said was uh, that, uh, the, that Al Franken moves the court for entry of an order dismissing contestant Stephen Carlson's notice of contest for failure to state a justiciable claim under Minnesota election law. Now, as I'm Steve Carlson, and I'm the contestant, and I'm the 2014 nominee for the U.S. Senate of a major uh, party in Minnesota, the Independence Party. And Al Franken, as I have noted in many of my movies, uh, created a, a new device which is called the invitation only season of campaign debates for U.S. Senate by which a major party, a Minnesota major party, the Minnesota Independence Party, whose statewide primary I won to get on the ballot with uh, Al, uh, just decides that that party doesn't exist, cannot be in any publicly broadcast debate. So that uh, really bothered me this year, but there's a few other things uh, which are in this uh, amended contest, and I put those out in some uh, movies. Uh, they include, for instance, gender quotas in violation of the uh, 19th Amendment, which abridge uh, male voters' a right to vote in the precinct caucuses, right to be voting delegates and really make it difficult for anybody to campaign uh, since people who don't agree with that can't participate there. So it's always going to be a majority of women making every decision in the DFL, which, uh, and the kind of women who want to go with that uh, generally tend to be the kind of, of radical extremists who you've seen dominating the agenda for the Democrats. Uh, you've also got race quotas in this law. It's, it's actually a state law that backs a uh, DFL constitution. So these are matters which I wanted to bring up. And uh, in addition, then, uh, I've got the question, the fact that no Minnesota court has ever dealt with any of these issues since they first started to pop on the radar screen in 2012. So, I have prepared another document which is called the uh, Notice of Appeal of the uh, uh, preliminary order which granted Al Franken the right just to appear at the Senate even though there's a contest against him and nothing could ever be uh, raised about it. So it's also asking for mandamus whereby the Minnesota Supreme Court would uh, go ahead and review this and, and make them follow the laws I'm going to uh, describe here. So here is a, a little bit from that. Uh, I hereby file this mandamus action or alternatively appeal from the preliminary order of the election contest panel that consisted of uh, district court trial judges from Hennepin County, Ramsey County, <coughs> and uh, uh, the 10th Judicial District, which is primarily Anoka, I believe it includes Wright, Sherburn, and forgive me if I can't remember the other fourth county uh, that uh, that judge uh, represented. And uh, the, the trial was on December 18th, lasted about three and a half hours in Ramsey County, and uh, what happened then is that uh, they entered this partial uh, judgment, which basically would put before the U.S. Senate only the issue of who got the most votes. And I've never, I've really never said that they counted the votes wrong. I've never said there was voting fraud. That's not the issue. The issue is that they have uh, committed. Uh, serious, material, and deliberate violation of the provisions of Minnesota election law. So I'll uh, uh, mention more here. Now they held this until the 22nd of 
December and then sent it to me in the mail. I don't know, perhaps they filed it that day, but it was dated the 18th. I don't know if it was filed the 18th. And what it does, uh, what this panel contest does is subvert the law, and it was done on, on a motion which was limited, the motion I just read, which was limited by a letter from Al Franken on December 16th, which is not served on me and the judges alone. I never seen it, but uh, there was some discussion of it in their in their uh, granting it, and uh, it's it's a letter from Al Franken's campaign, uh, and, and wanted to limit it to dismissing the contest on quote the portion of the election contest. This is a, the judge's writing. Portion of the election contest relating to which party to the contest received the highest number of votes legally cast in the election, unquote. And which party is entitled to receive the certificate of the election? And that's from the panel partial judgment, page two, uh, citing Minnesota statutes 209.12, but only the first sentence of a four sentence. Uh, statute, or, or part of it's actually, there's an additional part about uh, uh, sending all the files and records and evidence to the uh, Secretary of the United States Senate. But it, as you'll see, this goes on to say that if the, there's a question about Al Franken's right to office because of the serious material deliberate violation which I I did file this contest based on, then they can't enter any judgments. And so Al starts off saying that this is non justiciable, then apparently he changes his mind because he says, Oh wait, it is justiciable, but only the first sentence. The rest of it's not, therefore it should all be dismissed. So I think it's a very weak position. But this is the notice of appeal of it and the grounds. So uh, now they, they really are trying to get Secretary Ritchie just to send that election certificate to the U.S. Senate Secretary immediately without a final judgment and without the files, records, and evidence taken in this proceeding on the contest actually filed being forwarded to Washington and the U.S. Senate with it. Now what you're going to find is according to Article 1, Section 5 of the United States Constitution, that's not just Senate rules, it's the United States Constitution, only the Senate can, as a judicial body, in this case it, it acts in a judicial uh, capacity, can be the judge, the sole exclusive judge of this ele election contest. And so I'm saying in here rather forcefully that um, Minnesota judges simply cannot judge any portion of this, including this uh, uh, who got the most votes. Uh, and, and, and again, I don't have a problem with that. I'll admit right here, I don't have a problem with that. The problem I have is the second part, that therefore they're entitled to receive the certificate of the election. Because according to the statute as a whole, and, cer and certainly this is not something that the legislature could determine, only the U.S. Senate can determine this, and I'll get in, into this, and I think I think that um, the Constitution has to be followed, and Al Franken is committing, uh, again, more lawless acts, try, uh, trying to come out here from New York and represent Minnesota in the uh, U.S. Senate, and not, you know, basically just a celebrity kind of candidate. And he also writes books like Rush Limbaugh is a big, fat, stupid idiot. That's actually the title of his book. Um, I would not write a book like that about uh, Al Franken. Okay, so uh, this is in clear violation of Minnesota Statutes 209.12, which reads, evidence on any uh, points, uh, any other points specified in the notice of contest, including the question of the right of any person uh, to nomination or office on the ground of deliberate, serious, material violation uh, of the provisions of the Minnesota election law must be taken 
and preserved uh, by the judge trying the contest or by some person appointed by the judge for that purpose. But the judge shall, shall take, make no findings or conclusion on those points, unquote. And again, all this needs to be filed with the Secretary of the Senate. And it's for that purpose. And trying to hold that part which is intended for them out and just pretending that there's no contest, just getting the election certificate clean as a whistle and appearing in the Senate violates Minnesota law, also violates the U.S. Constitution. Because they're acting as a judge, they're reaching conclusions of law. So here's my grounds. Number one, the Congressional Office Election Statute 20912 clearly prohibits the panel from passing a judgment on, quote, the right of Al Franken to office because this election contest has been filed. Two, that the partial judgment subverts the law. This is an attempt of judges to undermine democracy. Three, that all the judges in this case are required, although they refuse, to give sole and exclusive judicial power over this contest to the U.S. Senate alone if they are to follow the law and not their own arbitrary, capricious flights of self-indulgence and power, irrigating the right that resides only in the people to conduct elections under the rights granted and secured for us in the U.S. Constitution. Four, that the voters of Minnesota would not be deprived, uh, necessarily or unnecessarily, of elected representation in the U.S. Senate. That's uh, from their partial findings, page 5, paragraph 5 as the panel finds, because the Senate can take this record, which our law requires be sent, and after Senate action, the panel, this court, and the United States Supreme Court can reach a final decision in appeal of the questions in the election contest. In other words, the Senate can do what they want with all of it. It doesn't deprive anybody of anything. Uh, now, if the Senate decides that there is a serious material and deliberate violation that calls into question Senator Franken's uh, right to be uh, to that office, to be the next U.S. Senator, then that's only their right. It's not anybody else's right. Number four, or I'm sorry, number five, that the panel, on the request of the rich and powerful funny entertainer celebrity, deliberately refused to follow 209.12. And a footnote just to explain and clearly filing of a partial judgment is taken in clear violation of sentence three which is the judge shall make no findings or conclusion on those points specified in the notice of contest including but not limited to the question of the right of any person to nomination or office that would be al franken on the ground of deliberate serious and material violation of the provisions of the Minnesota election law, unquote. By ruling that voters would be deprived of representation if the law were followed and these questions were brought to the U.S. Senate as required by law, the panel is ruling on these points that Franken does have the right. That must be left for the Senate. So out of that footnote. So they deliberately refused to follow the law but instead took this precipitous action which judges that deliberate, serious, and material violation of the uh, provision of the Minnesota law, and that the panel, it, and basically that it did not occur, that's what the judge uh, would, judging would be, without even considering them, because they, they say in their partial finding that they're still going to address these. But I guess from what I can gather, they think it's only in the context of whether the Independence Party uh, unlawfully or somehow unfairly and properly lost uh, its major party status because of the way that uh, Senator Franken and Mike McFadden conducted this campaign, basically to pretend there w was no uh, ma major party nominee there with them only the major parties of the Democrats and the major parties of the Republicans, which are the two big national parties. The Independence Party has not been associated with any national party uh, for quite a while. And I, I probably think that they should be, 
And I would like to see an American independence uh, movement uh, party, uh, which I would like to help to put together to run a, a candidate for president uh, in 2016 using the primary which should be preserved here in Minnesota, but also looking at other states across the country to inject a real third party movement into the presidential elections. Uh, so, but what they did is they violated our law by treating the major party as if it did not have equal legal status as they did, and a number of other things which are specified in the contest. And those are major, deliberate, serious things. Uh, that's just the debate claim, as Senator Franken has named it. They also have not had any uh, judicial uh, enforcement of any election laws except if there's a misspelling on the ballot or somebody's in the wrong ballot position, the Supreme Court said they would look at that, but nothing else. Well, if you look at Minnesota election law, it says that any kind of wrongful conduct by basically any individual charged with a duty related to that election is something that the Supreme Court will address, and that is specifying the uh, duties of the Minnesota Supreme Court and that is prescribing that as required by another constitutional provision. This was Article I, Section 4, which said the time, place, and manner of the holding of the election. So it's the holding it is very broad, uh, shall be prescribed by the state legislature in each of the states. And so once that's prescribed, I have argued, it needs to be followed. It isn't like you just make these laws up and as, as soon as there's an election that starts, you just forget about it. I call that the Wild West uh, approach to election law, and it, it has no place in American democracy uh, in, a, in a legal sense. Historically, there has been a Wild West. Uh, apparently, there's a Wild West here. But Minnesota should be for Minnesotans. Okay, That's not being regional or provincial, but it's saying that you can have people come in from New York and play with the media, the national media out of New York, and throw the election laws out the window so that you can get these kind of people in there and you can basically exclude the homegrown uh, Independence Party movement in Minnesota. And that's what's happened here. So again, in, uh, in the fifth ground, he took this precipitous action uh, which judges that deliberate, serious, and material violation and provisions of the election law, uh, it should, should be judged that they did occur. And the panel then, in turn, violated this prohibition by passing judgment on that fact, which is a self-same question of whether Senator Franken is therefore entitled to receive the certificate of election. He is not entitled to receive the certificate of election. The contest is pending on the question of his right to office, specifically that he has not gained that right in a valid election because of serious material and deliberate violation of Minnesota election law, including federal election law. And it is, a, it is clear that the certificate of election is part of the files, records, and evidence taken. And therefore, it needs to be forwarded to the U.S. Senate. That's why they take it for the U.S. Senate. And until the U.S. Senate acts, no Minnesota judge or court can sit as a judge for reasons that I alluded to previously in, in, in the films I put up, but I will make very clear here. Uh, here's ground number six. That there is a clearly, clearly a just cause to withhold the final judgment by the panel of the district court judges. And that is, the U.S. Senate is the sole judge of this election contest, not Judge Vanden North not the entire panel, and not this Minnesota Supreme Court. This has been put squarely in front of their noses, citing Stephen L. Morgan versus United States of America from the uh, District of Columbia Circuit, one of the important uh, circuit courts in the country, especially for uh, election law. And that's citing the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 5, though they admit it from their filing, nowhere in does the panel ever mention Article 1, Section 5, and they should. And they are not fit 
to override that noble document, the United States Constitution. They are selling the very idea of democratic elections and must be completely aware of this. Ground seven, that the distortion in the count of the Independence Party as a result of said election cannot be separated out from the conduct of the U.S. Senate campaign and its election and results reserved by U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 5, to the U.S. Senate itself in the first instance, and therefore no state court can rule on these matters until the Senate is finished with it. Eight. Ground eight. There's eight grounds. This action constitutes a conclusion of law is it, that is expressly forbidden by the very statute on which Senator Franken and the favorable Minnesota court purport to rely. Again, no Minnesota court may stand as a judge in this contest, and sending the election certificate when there is a contest to the right of office of Senator Franken that is reserved for the Senate while withholding the serious material and deliberate violation from that Senate is a violation not only of Minnesota but also the federal law and constitution. This panel's violating the law. The relief sought. This Minnesota Supreme Court must immediately begin to follow our pre-established election laws prescribed and cease the lawlessness of the Minnesota courts and parties, specifically, to restore the discovery proceedings, including the answering of all interrogatory questions served on Senator Franken, on Mark Ritchie, Secretary Ritchie, on Nancy Breen in his office, who has for years been uh, signing people up to get the voter email addresses that uh, Minnesota voters submit voluntarily or involuntarily. They just started doing it involuntarily when they registered to vote. And that's because under Minnesota law, that is this Minnesota Government Data Practices Act that's presumed to be public because the legislature has not and could not, under the First Amendment, uh, classify it as non-public. And the other person on whom interrogatories were served is Bert Black, the OSS Council, that's Office of Secretary of the State Council, uh, who really uh, jumped in and overruled Nancy Bream in 2012 and started this litigation. Okay, and also, uh, they should not be allowed to refuse to answer on procedural grounds because that would require a conclusion of law that only the Senate can answer. And maybe it's the U.S. Senate that needs to handle this discovery. And actually, it was, it was uh, conceived by Vandenorth that the Senate should not be bound by the record of this panel, and therefore I might have another remedy of having them sanction discovery, and indeed, that is something I do want to do, but uh, before January 6th, and until they do that, this discovery in Minnesota should proceed. And I did not know at that time that they had already written this partial judgment based on uh, this little one-page motion from Senator Franken, and uh, a little letter that I have not even seen, but which I've described to you. So they should restore discovery, but most importantly, all the files, records, and evidence thus far must be certified and delivered to the Secretary of the U.S. Senate by the court. Now, I can, I can deliver that to the U.S. Senate, but I can't certify it. And they would probably want it to be certified, but they don't need it to be certified. But I think under Minnesota law, it's supposed to be certified. And I will lose Minnesota legal rights. It may turn out to be moot if Franken is successful in getting this done without the full record. Uh, but um, I think that they would benefit if we would continue uh, discovery and certify that and provide it to the Senate. Uh, there should be communication right now between myself, Senator Franken, uh, and uh, probably Senator Franken, myself, and the court. Uh, could be the, US, the Minnesota Supreme Court, but perhaps they would like to simply uh, mandate that the uh, panel continue 
and that we make sure that the U.S. Senate has everything it wants and needs on January 6th when they will organize the 114th Congress. And they are a bigger deal than one senator, even though Senator Franken somehow served as the chair of the Judiciary Committee of the U.S. Senate. So he should know all of these things. All right, so I, accordingly, this election certificate, well, let, let me put it this way, the most importantly is, is to uh, certify and deliver this, even though there is more to be done after the U.S. Senate has had ample notice and opportunity to make these judgments. I'm talking about more in Minnesota. Accordingly, this election certificate must be withheld, or else the entire record must forthwith be forwarded to the Senate as required by Minnesota law, by honesty and non-interference in the judgments of the U.S. Senate. The composition of the U.S. Senate is fundamental to all the laws of the country, and the admission to the Union of Minnesota requires faithful compliance with the just requirements of the U.S. Senate. This partial judgment must be immediately reversed, and the entire file's record, including a transcript of oral argument and evidence, be certified and forwarded to the U.S. Senate together with the election certificate ordered by the panel. If that election certificate has been transmitted to the Secretary of the Senate without the full record, this court must immediately notify the Secretary of the Senate, and this will be the Minnesota Supreme Court this is directed to, and withdraw the certificate as invalid and resubmit it with the full files, records, and evidence since the race is still subject to a contest under Minnesota law concerning serious, deliberate, and material violation of provisions of Minnesota election law, including the U.S. Constitution 1st, 5th, 14th, 15th, and 19th Amendments in Article 1, Section 4, as set out in the amended contest accepted by the statewide panel. <clears throat> So I'm going to end this uh, video. Um, next video is going to focus on this uh, memorandum beginning with the duties of Minnesota courts concerning an election. And uh, I will argue very forcefully that stop violating the United States Constitution. The Minnesota Supreme Court has violated the U.S. Constitution. They started to get this panel going. Now this panel and Senator Franken, the former chair of the Judiciary Committee of the United States Senate, are violating the United States Constitution. And, and what is Senator Franken doing with that position of the Judicial com uh, Committee? He is authoring and supporting and organizing a rollback of the First Amendment because on, on the grounds that he doesn't like the Citizen United decision, so he's going to try to get everybody to amend the First Amendment so that it gives him and people like him in the Senate control over the campaign financing of his own campaigns, of the Senate campaigns. So not only are they reaching into the legal apparatus to try to control the campaign, cut off all debate, cut off all communications and free media available to a third party major uh, party candidate uh, who, are, that's by Minnesota statute, and also instead engineer quotas uh, for a DFL, so even the people in the DFL lose their First Amendment rights, and also cut off use of public information, voter email addresses that Mark Ritchie, as Secretary of State, the Chief Elections Officer, dug in and took home and raise funds for his campaign and other DFLers, but denies to the Minnesota Independence Party nominee. For U.S. House in 2012, when I applied for that, and for the U.S. Senate this year. And that's what this is about. I'm Steve Carlson. Please look for the next video on this. And on January 6th, let's look at to the U.S. Senate to make sure that they enforce the U.S. Constitution including free speech, and that they look into this matter, because this is all over the country. 
Al Franken and Walter Mondale and the rest of the DFL, uh, Don Fraser, uh, George McGovern was doing it. That's how he got to be the nominee for 